At this point, no one knew exactly what had happened to Challenger. Flight GC, we've had uh, negative contact, lost down link. Okay, all operators, watch your data carefully. While NASA scrambled recovery teams, there was total confusion at the space center. He said, I don't see her, and I, or I don't see the shuttle, and I said, it's gone. And it was, I mean, you just knew it, it was, uh, no, you knew it was, you knew. Flight controllers here looking very carefully at the situation. Obviously a major malfunction. I guess it, it must have been a minute before I realized that the crew was either dead or in the process of, of dying. Uh, I wanted to cry, uh, and everybody around, but we couldn't look at each other. I just sat in stunned silence for the longest period of time. Basically faced the wall, sat in my chair, and tried to hold back my emotions. Flight Fido. Go ahead. RSO reports vehicle exploded. Copy. In the weeks after the accident, over 40% of the Challenger was recovered from the sea. NASA analyzed the debris and all the flight data to assess what had happened. Roger Beaujolais and his colleagues at Thiokol had been correct on the eve of the launch. On ignition, the O-rings on the right-hand booster had disintegrated, producing a black plume of smoke. The only reason it hadn't exploded on the pad was that the hole was initially plugged by debris from the solid fuel. At 59 seconds, Challenger traveled through the most violent wind shear a shuttle had ever encountered. This, in turn, broke the temporary seal created by the solid fuel debris. Two seconds later, an intense flame started burning its way through the steel casing. At 73 seconds, a connecting arm broke free, and the nose of the booster swiveled into the liquid oxygen tank. The thin aluminium shell ruptured, and half a million gallons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen vaporized in moments. The vehicle broke up into hundreds of fragments. The crew compartment plummeted towards the ocean, but at seven miles up, it took nearly two and a half minutes to descend. Later, NASA calculated that some of the crew might have been conscious on descent, and that all were probably alive. The seven astronauts perished when the stricken craft hit the sea at more than 200 miles an hour. The destruction of Challenger and its brave crew greatly affected America. The media appetite for Krista McAuliffe meant the nation knew this shuttle crew like no other. Commander Dick Scobie, pilot Mike Smith, Dr. Judith Resnick, Dr. Ron McNair, Lieutenant Colonel Ellison Onizuka, Captain Greg Jarvis, and teacher Krista McAuliffe. A presidential commission concluded that NASA's methods of internal reporting were at fault but no individual was to be held responsible. The space program was stopped for two years while safety was improved. Morton Thiokol kept their contract and spent $480 million to find a solution to the O-ring problem. Individual engineers were given greater power to call off a launch if they had doubts about safety. A 
at Morton Thiokol, Bob Ebeling agreed to early retirement. The four Thiokol managers who recommended the launch also took early retirement. Roger Beaujolais resigned from Thiokol and became a college lecturer in business ethics. At NASA, Judd Lovingood accepted early retirement. Gene Thomas never launched another shuttle, but became safety director overseeing improvements to shuttle takeoffs. Grace Corrigan has helped open 42 Challenger Learning Centers in memory of her daughter. And Barbara Morgan has continued at NASA, where in 1999 she became a fully-fledged astronaut. She soon hopes to fulfill Krista's dream and fly a shuttle mission. What happened was wrong, but what the mission was about and what the crew was doing, trying to do, and what NASA was trying to do was absolutely right. And uh, to focus on education is the right thing, and to explore the unknown is the right thing, and see that, it, that the universe is, you know, it is constantly expanding, which means it's full of never-ending open opportunities for all of us. Although what happened with the Challenger was absolutely wrong, what the crew was trying to do and what NASA was trying to accomplish was absolutely right.